All right, typically when we do a conversation on a couch, we're on a couch in some place, but when you have a World Cup champion, fancied up a little bit. We are <laughs> in chairs, we're outside, it's beautiful out, Rose Lavelle, thanks for sitting down. Thanks for having me. Uh, so it's been about two months since you scored a goal in the World Cup final. Mm -hmm. How often do you think about that? Uh, I don't know, a decent amount. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like every day, like when, when does it come up, just when people bring it up or? Does it occasionally, like, you're in a moment by yourself and you're like, holy crap, I scored in the World Cup final? Uh, no, I feel like I've kind of settled back into DC life and MWSL life, so kind of focused on that right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, that goal, though, was kind of you in a nutshell, skillful, is ambitious. Do you remember the first time when you, maybe you were a kid and you kind of noticed, all right, I play a little bit differently than, than everybody else is doing this? Um... No, I don't know if it was ever something I noticed. It was just something that kind of felt natural to me, but I don't think I ever thought it was something that was like unique. You don't think about the style necessarily? Uh, it just, it kind of just is you, has been you since since you started playing? Um, I guess so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't really have a good answer. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no one had. I guess it is. I mean, it means it's natural. Um, was there a time you noticed though that you were that you were really good? That that all right? Maybe I have a chance to to go places in this game in this sport that uh, are at the highest levels. Um, no, <laughs> no, I don't ever felt like feel like there was like a breakout year for me. I felt like I just kind of like gradually built on every year. Um, so. If, feel like it was kind of like a steady progression and um, yeah I don't think there was like one moment that I was like wow like this is it for me. Mm, that's interesting. Um, since you became a, a well-known member of the U.S. Women's National Team how, how did your life change then and then since the World Cup obviously you're on an even bigger stage how, how has your life changed um, or may, maybe now as you said it's, it's back to quote-unquote normal. Um, is, is normal the same normal as it, as it used to be? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really feel any different. <laughs> I don't feel like any more or less important. So I think my life's just like a little busier now, yeah. um, which is fine, but I like doing nothing. So, <laughs> so yeah, I don't have a lot you have of less, time. You have less nothing time? Yeah, I, have, I don't have a lot of time to do nothing anymore, but um, yeah, it's been fine. Um, I know you've talked in a, in a bunch of interviews about your youth coach who was really formative for you growing up. How much of your game was developed kind of in that team setting with him versus, I know you've talked about the homework that he gave you uh, going home. How much of that, that of your game was developed, you know, on the field with teammates as, as a young kid versus going home and just spending some time by yourself in a ball and, and kind of cultivating that skill? Um, I mean, I think I like got, I feel like I gained the most from just going out in the backyard and like kind of a developing a relationship with the ball and um, playing around with the ball in ways that I couldn't when I was in a team setting. Um, but I think that was kind of inspired by my coach. I feel like he was someone who made me want to go out of my backyard and keep like getting better and constantly like find new tricks to do or get a new juggling record. So he made it fun for me and um, is I feel like the reason I kind of fell in love with the game. Did you ever get in trouble at practice for trying stuff, you know, going out of the, the structure or because he was the coach that was encouraging that kind of creativity, it, it worked out? No, I don't feel like I've ever had a coach that's like really like tried to stop me from being me. I feel like I've been lucky in the sense that I feel like every coach has been kind of encouraging with the way I play and has encouraged me to kind of step up and um, play my game. Um, which has been really nice. I think I got lucky because I know that's not the case with a lot of people. Um, you're obviously super competitive, as anyone at this level is. Uh, do you ever get in games where you have that little bit of extra ability, touch, skill, whatever you want to call it, that you just literally just try to embarrass someone? They Maybe they tackled you in a way you didn't like or whatever, <laughs> and that competitive streak kicks in and like, all right, I got something for you next time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that ever crosses my mind. I mean, there's times in the game where like, but I feel like every athlete at this level kind of gets in the zone and stuff kind of just starts flowing and it doesn't seem like you're even thinking about it. Everything just kind of comes natural. I feel like those are the moments when I do, when I like play the best. What about in pickup games, anything like that? You ever never try to mess with, with people who are, like, <laughs> don't really understand what they're going against? Well, I can't really play in pickup games right now. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, younger Rose, who was allowed to play in pickup oh. games. 
yeah, I feel like younger Rose was a little, a little more arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, is there something that comes to mind? The worst time you ever embarrass someone? I have no clue. I no. don't know. There's got to be one. Some some person said something wrong, and you were like, "Oh yeah, we're." I got something for you. No, I think my favorite was when like parents would try to get in my head. And really? Then, yeah. And this is more youth level, college. Like when? When did youth. that? Youth. Yeah, like club teams. Just because you were the smallest one on the field, or what? I don't know. <laughs> I you could just like, they would just yell things to their daughter like, "Let her dance," and I'd be like, "All right." We'll dance. I'll dance. <laughs> um, only a real like serious question for you the injury stuff has obviously not been fun for you and mm -hmm. so much of that is is mental um and you know you get back to the point physically where you think you're there and then there's still that like in the back of your mind like man is this going to happen again do you think you can get to a point and are you maybe at that point where you can play more freely or have you just had to learn how to manage that side of it to continue to play knowing that there's always going to be be risk while playing um, honestly, I think it's kind of been a balance. I feel like I don't ever want to let fear kind of dictate how I play. So I feel like even when I do maybe have like a recent injury in the back of my head, I kind of go out with that in the back of my head, but also like knowing that I can't let it hold me back or let it stop how I'm playing because I feel like that's when you're going to get hurt is when you're not doing, not playing like your natural self. Yeah. Are there things that you've learned, you know, conversations with coaches, things like that, where you're like, all right, I, I trust in the plan that we've got, and, and how long did that take to get to that point? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think every time I've come back from an injury, it's been kind of like a group mm -hmm. effort. I feel like I've had a lot of really great people on my side that have helped me, um, like, kind of build on each progression, and um, it's obviously very frustrating, but I feel like I have to trust the people that know best and trust myself that I like know my body and not push it too much but also know when I can push it more um I feel like a lot goes into it but I feel like I've learned a lot from all my experiences obviously your professional career took a, a weird turn when Boston disbands you wind up here how much did having Mal and Andy here help that transition period a couple of years ago um yeah it's been really fun I they're like two of my best friends and I live with them um but yeah, it's been so fun to like continue to kind of build a relationship on the field. I feel like we like get each other so well and um, I feel like how we are with each other off the field really helps that and um, it's been so fun. I, I love them. So I found a video that was based off you guys living together and, and I've got a couple of roommate questions for you <laughs> on those. Who is the messiest in your house? <laughs> this is so funny. Me and Mel just had to answer all these questions. Um, uh. It, I, I didn't see all, that video. No, no, so. no, it's all like so neutral. Like we're honestly all like the same amount of messy, but everyone like does their share. Like we all kind of take turns when we, we like when to clean up. And so there's, I wouldn't like put one person as the messiest. It's like we kind of are the same. So by the same token, there's no one that's like the mom of the group that's getting everybody in line. Oh, hey, make sure you do your dishes or. No, there's no one that's like, you need to do your chores. I'm, Sunny cooks for me. Mm -hmm. sometimes but then I in exchange will do the dishes and clean up so you got a system yeah we have a good system going all right who's the most likely to eat someone else's food it, again it's <laughs> it's all the same like I feel like we're all very you guys have really come up with like the yeah, ultimate roommate like, sharing we system we just flow like if I'm like hey can I use this and they're like yeah and then maybe they'll ask you something of mine it's I there's not. Congratulations on the best roommate situation anyone has ever found. I know. I can also, are you available for roommate training? I have some roommates who need this. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, we'll, we, we'll discuss. It's a good we'll discuss later uh, a price or something. Uh, I, I heard that the cooking thing is is a thing for you that you don't cook, can't mm -hmm. cook. Uh, if you could learn to cook one dish. Well, I did kind of be? learn to cook last year, and I just got really lazy this year. Um, <laughs> Because it's like when I'm hungry, I want to eat now, not It's not, not, not a in prior, a half hour. Um, no, no prior planning involved in no, that. No, yeah, yeah, no. Are you that way with other things? Are you just kind of on the whim type of person? Or, or do you, are there certain areas of your life that are very well planned and just oh. hunger is not one of them? No, I'm a big procrastinator. Uh, yeah. I see. All right. 
close with this. Um, I've heard stories about you and the things that you do for others that are really cool and the impact that you can have. And I think you've obviously been able to see that, um, especially since getting back some of the, the stories that have come out. Um, when did you realize that you could have that impact on, on younger people and, and how are the ways that you try to manifest that and, and use that platform? Um, I don't know. I feel like I had really good role models growing up and I when I was like looking up to the national team, it was like Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, Julie Foudy, Heather Metz from Cincinnati. And um, I feel like I saw how they like handled themselves and like reached out and were role models. And I feel like I just kind of am following in their footsteps. I feel like I had really good people to learn from. Is that a responsibility that you feel? Um, I don't know if it's like a responsibility. I've think it's something I kind of want to do because I mm. feel like I had that for me and I know how big it was for me to have role models to look up to so I feel like it's cool that I can kind of serve as the same role model that I had and give back to the sport in the same way that it gave to me. And when you see some of these kids especially those who you know I don't know how much of some of these stories are out there I've been lucky enough to, to get a, develop a relationship with Steve and he's told me a couple of things here and there um, in terms of you know sick kids or whatever like that just is it I mean like when, when did you decide like all right kids that's that's the area that I think is the biggest and it does it just go back to that when you were younger and you think of yourself in that that role of being the kid looking up to the US national team players or, or your heroes maybe that even weren't on the national team that, that that's the area that you wanted to kind of give back yeah I mean I think like that's kind of when they can be like I feel like that young age was when I was like influenced the most mm. by like who I looked up to and um, I don't know I think that yeah I don't know I, <laughs> I don't really have an answer I just no I think that's that's a telling you know geez, you, that impact lasted to the point that now is a t mid 20 something that it's like yeah no I can do that too yeah, it's been cool. Very cool. Rosa thanks for sitting down. Appreciate it. Sure.